Welcome to BMS and welcome to the channel and very excited for the 4.36 launch. So here we are in 4.36, going to do a quick overview of the DTC system and your data transfer cartridge. So the importance of it is that it's used for all of your targets, steer points, MFD defaults, steer points, radios, com, com plan, IFF plan, and now harms, harm threat tables, which is new in this new update here. But this is a very important aspect for BMS because you need to make sure that your DT DTC is loaded with all the correct information and the most information you can put in while in 2D. So you will have that as a reference while you're in 3D in the pit. First thing I want to talk about is the click dance. It is the most important thing. You need to do that after as many times as you can after you make changes or after it's been a while and definitely right before you enter 3D. So the click dance... As, to, as referred to as click dance for majority of the people who play BMS, make sure you're in the correct slot. So hammer six, make sure you're in hammer six. If you see something like this and there's a blue thing here and you're on the wrong uh, flight for what you're in, then it's a problem. Your, your, your click dance might not be as, as uh, accurate as you would want it to be. So make sure you double click your flight, double click your, your slot. So make sure you're in the correct slot here. Double click that, go to DTC, IFF, IFF plan, COM, and COM plan, press save. So what this does is it updates all your your radios for your, your COM menus in your in your CNI. Has base ops, departure, tower, and all those different things. Also it has your VHF, your intraflight data link. Make sure you can talk to your, your flight members here. And the IFF, make sure you have all the IFF correct IFF codes and the time events, make sure everything is good to go, so that you will come up as sweet on the IFF interrogations from everybody else. That's something you don't want to have, is to have a, a bad IFF code while in a mission. So that's the quick click dance, and make sure you do it every time you can get. I'm going to go over these, these steer point lines here, so it's really good to have steer point lines, especially if there's a, a border in this case. you got the border of North and South Korea, so it's good to have a... Uh, reference on your MFD where that border is. So to create a border or a steer point line, you right click, go to set steer point lines. In this case, I already used all the line ones, so I'm going to go to line two. It's a line, a, a empty dot here, open dot. And I'm going to right click again, go to steer point lines. Make sure you go to the same line number. So I'm going to go to line two again. It creates a, uh, a connected line, a connected connects the two dots here. If you accidentally choose a different line, so if I go to line three, it'll create another empty dot and it won't connect with the line twos because it's not the same. You delete by right clicking on it and remove steer point from line. It'll remove it. So you just keep adding the same line numbers and that'll add your, your, uh, your lines. And if you would want, you can also right click on one of the dots and a uh, create additional steer point to line that'll close it up and make it really easy so That's an option for you to do without having to move everything around Moving on next to the threat circles So the threat circles you want to always make sure you put in as many threat circles as you can As long as you could see it in 3d or in 2d. So in this case, I'm gonna go over here I see there's a SAM here. So I'm gonna right click on the SAM Go to status it tells me exactly what that SAM is here. It's an SA5 So you know that there's an SA5 there so what I'm going to do now is right click, go to set pre-planned threat steer point. Oh, let me close that. Right click, set pre-planned steer point, and actually set one here too. So you have uh, you set one of these, and it creates a diamond. You can left click on it. It'll bring up this drop-down menu. Go to the respective uh, SAM that you had. So it's, in that case, we had a SA5. Look on the SA5. SA5 range is 54 miles. Press accept, and it places a steer point or a threat circle right there. And yet now you have a threat circle. Same thing with anything else. So if you go somewhere and there's an SA2 right here, let's say you right click, status, and it's an SA2. So you create another one, left click, put an SA2 there, and you notice how you have all of these different SAMs at the top here. Then you have uh, some boats, AWACS, J Stars, Tanker, and all these different. Your points that you could uh, put in to your, your 3D MFD, and you can actually see it. I'm gonna do the SA2, put the SA2 there, 
press accept, place it right here. The other ones is like a, a steer point, it's a reference point. You can right click, uh, put set pre planned threat steer point, left click, go to let's just say this is AWACS or let's say friendly forces. So you can click that, press friendly forces. And this, wherever this is on your on your 2D, that's where it'll show up in your 3D. And that'll it'll say friendly forces next to the pre-planned threat steer point 58. And while you do all those changes, make sure you save all those changes. Do the click dance. Right click on your DTC. Go to IFF, IFF plan, com, com plan, and then save. And this updates all of your changes and saves it to your DTC so you can have that in 3D. Now we're going to go over the targets, how to set up targets in multiplayer when it comes to different human flights or human players. You go into your your uh, your DTC, you see these targets here, nothing's set right now, so we're going to set those targets right now. So we're, say we're going to attack this SA-5, you right click on it, press recon, depending on how many units they are, that's how long it'll take to load. This is the single player, not going to worry about this in this tutorial, but you do need to worry about the drop down menu, not going to do anything down here. So you choose what target you want to be uh, targeted against, or what you want to set up as your targets. For steer points, usually there's nothing over 15 when it comes to steer points. So it's good to use over 15 when it comes to your steer points. And setting up those steer points as target points. Because if you change your actual steer points, your navigational steer points, targets, it'll change to the the, uh, the target point. So you could either use 15, or I started to use 99. You can go all the way to 99, and then all the way down to 80, 81. So you have plenty of plenty of uh, target steer points there. I'm going to start at 99, and you can kind of go down the line to see which person in your flight wants to attack what. So I'm going to set steer point 99 as square pair. So I set it up as a square pair. I press accept. 99, square pair, accept. That sets it as the square pair. Go to another target of opportunity. So go to the SA-5, and I would press accept for 98. So I go to the SA, SA-5, one of the launchers, 98, press accept, go down one, go to the next one, press accept, down one, go to the next one, press accept. So you can go down the line and it'll enter all of those as your target steer points. So I'm going to check that in here. You go 99, that's a square pair, down one, SA-5, down one, SA-5 down one SA-5. So you can go down the line and make sure everybody has the same steer points to make it easy to sort out targets when you're in 3D. So that's how you can do your target steer points for human human players in Falcon BMS. So after you do that, make sure you do your click dance. So IFF, IFF plan, COM, COM plan, and save. That'll save everything and give any updates if any updates were made during your or sorting of ground targets. Other features inside of the DTC are the EWS. I have a video about this in Weapons Delivery Planner. I will have it uh, down below if you want to check that out. It's easier in Weapons Delivery Planner, in my opinion. How you can set up your chaff and flare programs. You got flares, you got chaff, you got all the different programs, and the burst interval and burst quantity and all that stuff. MFD, same thing. I have another video in about it in Weapons Delivery Planner. Go check it out. It's in the description. Uh, you can set up all your defaults for air-to-air -air master mode. So air-to-air -air master mode, my MFD-1, my FCR will be primary, and my secondary will be off, and all that stuff is off, and current will be primary once I go to it. MFD-2 is HDS, M SMS, and TGP. So when I go to air-to-air -air master mode, all of, these, all, all, all of these MFD screens automatically populate in the bottom of my MFD. But like I said, all that's in another video in Weapons Delivery Planner. So comms has your VHF or UHF and your VHF. So you have to trust BMS, and it's it's 100. It's for majority of the time, it's usually pretty accurate. I've never really had any problems doing the following the click dance. This is all of your comms here. You got your base ops, you got ground, 
tower approach and all those different things. So this is it's very important that you have this comm planned and saved so you have the same frequencies as everyone in your flight. Same thing with VHF. Usually the first flight has Victor 15 and this is used between between flights. So you definitely want to make sure you have your, your comms updated. And uh, it's kind of weird that's a not a one there. That's interesting. So you want to definitely want to make sure that your your comms are good to go and updated. IFF, I about 99% of the time never touch this. All you have to do is IFF plan and save, and it'll all be good. And then the harms, there is a a threat table that I'm showing here that you could use from the manual to put in your harms. So for SA2, put 102 in there. Then SA3, put 103, and it auto automatically puts the zero at the beginning. And then you would press uh, press save to save this table that you have. And you can go to different tables and all these different things. It's a new feature in BMS or uh, yeah, Falcon BMS 4.36. So the manual is very important. Recommend reading it in its entirety. Like I said, I recommend highly recommend the manual and reading it in, in its entirety because it's very important and it's always good to read the manual. And there's plenty of stuff in here. There's lots of new new features and information in here. So if you scroll down these black bars on the left side here that means that it's new information from the last last uh last update it is in your falcon bms 4.36 docs and has all the manuals there so i'd recommend reading all of those and be aware that all of the dash one this is from 35 the dash one for 35 is still applicable same thing with the checklists everything is still good to work on 4.36 as it was a 4.35 they're uh, they are updating so be patient pa be patient and they'll have that pretty soon so with that being said hopefully you learned something with the dtc and i'll see you next time